When the earth breathes, it doesn't exhale air. It breathes fire, molten, ancient, and heavy with metals that define empires. And among them, one gleams brighter, denser, and rarer than all others. Gold. It's not merely a metal, it's the earth's buried whisper, the echo of its fiery heart. Every vein of gold on this planet tells a story of pressure, heat, time, and movement. A story that started billions of years before human eyes ever saw a glint of it in the sand. Today we'll trace that invisible breath of the earth, from the molten core to the shallow stream, from violent tectonic rage to the soft shimmer in a prospector's pan. This is where gold truly begins, when the earth breathes. Beneath the ground we walk on lies an engine of unimaginable power, a churning ocean of molten rock that never sleeps. This inner earth, alive and restless, constantly pushes, folds and fractures the crust above it. When it moves, it breathes, and every breath sends whispers of metals, gases, and fluids into the cracks and veins of the world. Gold begins here, not in the surface sands, but deep, miles below our feet. It forms in moments of violence. When magma rises through fractures in the crust, it brings with it hot fluids carrying dissolved elements. Sulfur, silica, copper, and traces of gold. As the magma cools and pressure shifts, those metals separate out, concentrating in veins. Slowly, atom by atom, the invisible turns visible. The Earth's breath solidifies into wealth. These veins, quartz streaks hidden inside ancient rocks, are the true lungs of gold. Within them, the precious metal hides in the narrowest spaces, bound to sulfur and silica, frozen in time. To the untrained eye, they are just cracks in stone. But to geology, they are arteries of creation, where liquid heat once flowed and cooled. Each quartz vein tells of a different pulse, some formed during immense mountain-building events, others when superheated groundwater surged through faults after volcanic eruptions. These are the moments when the planet exhaled gold, breathing it from darkness into crystal. Gold does not appear quickly. Its birth requires time, endless time. Under immense pressure and heat, Invisible molecules migrate through microscopic spaces, collecting where temperature and chemistry allow stability. This process takes millions of years. Every grain of gold we see today is a survivor of those eons. It's as though the Earth's slow heartbeat left a trace, and that trace glitters. But gold is not content to stay buried forever. Tectonic power cracks the world apart, and those deep-rooted veins begin to fracture, crumble and rise closer to the surface. Erosion begins its patient work. Rain, wind, and ice grind mountains down grain by grain. Gold, being heavier and chemically stubborn, refuses to dissolve. It breaks free from the rock and starts its long journey down river. This is the moment when the earth exhales gold into the open air. It's no longer a secret trapped in quartz. It's dust, nugget, flake, flowing with the rivers like a shimmer of breath itself. Every river that flows through ancient terrain is not just a body of water. It's a conveyor of history. Within its gravel lies the memory of mountains that no longer exist. When you stand by a stream and see a flash of yellow between pebbles, you're looking at a time capsule, a piece of the Earth's deep past set free by erosion. Gold is dense, about 19 times heavier than water. So when rivers slow, when current bends or obstacles form, gold settles. It sinks through layers of lighter sand and hides in the dark crevices of the riverbed. Every swirl, every eddy, every bend in the stream writes a clue for those who know how to read it. This is the river's silent language, the way the earth continues to breathe gold into its surface world. Long before human alchemists dreamed of turning lead into gold, nature was already performing that miracle. In reverse, 
not by transforming metals, but by refining chaos into purity. Volcanic vapors rise, sulfur bonds with gold, fluids migrate, and when the right chemistry meets the right temperature, metal precipitates out, pure, metallic, dense. These reactions take place in the hidden realms, deep hydrothermal vents, volcanic fissures, fault zone veins. They're the Earth's laboratories, and each grain of gold is its experiment, frozen forever. There is no explosion when gold forms, no sound, no flash. It happens silently, molecule by molecule, invisible to all but the slow patience of time. In the darkness of the crust, water rich in minerals flows through fractures, depositing trace amounts of gold as it cools. Those invisible threads accumulate until the thread becomes a seam and the seam becomes a vein. When that vein reaches the light, humans call it a discovery. But for the Earth, it's just another breath, another cycle complete. Most people imagine gold is permanent, but the Earth never keeps anything forever. Just as mountains rise, they also fall. Gold, once buried deep within quartz, now moves through rivers, eventually carried to the ocean. Over millions of years, oceanic crust may again subduct under continents, melting and reforming the same gold at new depths. The cycle restarts, the planet recycling its own wealth. This is how the Earth breathes gold, through creation, destruction, and renewal. Even science struggles to capture every step of this process. But we know that water plays a key role. Superheated, mineral-rich fluids act like carriers, transporting gold atoms through rock fractures. Changes in pressure, temperature, or acidity trigger precipitation. Imagine, a pocket of rock cools suddenly. The gold within the fluid has nowhere to go, so it clings to nearby minerals, pyrite, quartz, or arsenopyrite. Over time, layer upon layer, it grows. A silent crystallization, a golden exhale. When the earth cools, its breathing slows. Old hydrothermal systems fade, mountains erode, and what remains are the relics of past activity, the loads and placer deposits we find today. In a sense, every gold deposit we uncover is a fossilized breath of the planet. It's not just mineral wealth, it's geological memory. Magnetism, too, plays a subtle role. Many gold deposits form in regions of strong magnetic contrast, where magnetic minerals help channel heat and fluids. Even subtle variations in the Earth's magnetic field influence how molten material moves and cools. So when we trace magnetic anomalies on geological maps, we're not just studying physics. We're tracking the invisible heartbeat of the Earth, a rhythm that once carried gold through its veins. If you could peel away the continents, you'd see streaks and bands where gold once flowed. The scars of ancient collisions, volcanic arcs, and deep crustal faults. These are the continent's hidden blueprints of wealth. Every rich gold field on Earth, from the Witwatersrand Basin to the Yukon, lies along one of these ancient fault scars where the Earth's breath escaped long ago. Gold doesn't appear randomly. It follows the architecture of the planet itself. Even today, the Earth continues to whisper clues through its stones. Quartz with iron staining, serpentine soils, black sands along the bends of rivers. These are not coincidences. They're geological signatures of breath. When you hold a gold nugget, you are holding concentrated time, compressed chemistry, and the echo of a volcanic sigh that happened hundreds of millions of years ago. The truth is, gold never leaves the earth. It simply moves from core to crust, from rock to river, from human hand to vault, it remains part of the same endless circulation. When the earth breathes, it does not create or destroy, it transforms. And gold is the perfect witness to that transformation.